Hello everyone, I'm going to give you a little quick orientation to this uh, lab activity you guys are going to do on genetics. It's called the evil bacterial exotoxin. And there's an embedded PowerPoint here that will walk you through the case study and you should be able to just click through this here in Blackboard and read what's there. And as you do this, you'll notice that there are questions embedded in here and what you're going to do is actually answer these questions on Blackboard. So after you've worked through the case and have answered these questions as best as you can, you want to click this link right here to evil bacterial exotoxin. And there we go. And it's just like if you were launching a test, you're going to click the begin button over here and that will bring up these questions for you within Blackboard to answer. And uh, it's only going to show you one question at a time, so you're going to want to go over here and click the arrow buttons to, to move from one question to the next. All right, so I'm going to back out. And when you do start answering the questions, what's going to happen is you can do multiple attempts with this. So when you have finished all the questions, you hit save and submit at the end. Uh, you click OK to review your results. And it's going to show you the questions that you got right, and it's going to show you the questions that you missed with some feedback. And uh, so then try to, you know, work on the, the things that you missed, go back, and unfortunately you have to redo the entire assignments, which is kind of a pain, but there's not really any way uh, around that. You're going to have to re-answer everything uh, if you want to try for a higher score. But you can keep submitting new attempts up until the due date, and only your highest score will wind up counting. All right, so let me bring up the... the actual assignment itself. All right, so what we're going to be doing here, we are pretending, we're going to have a pretend gene on DNA. So we've been talking a lot uh, in chapter eight about gene expression, protein synthesis, about how genes on DNA code for proteins and the processes that have to take place to convert the information in a gene on DNA, that genetic recipe, that genetic blueprint, into an actual protein product. So this case is going to help you review that first. There's going to be a lot of terminology review in here. And then second, we also talked about genetic mutations and the various types of genetic mutations can occur and the impacts that those mutations on DNA can ultimately have on a protein that is being produced. So this activity is going to help you review all of those different things. I have used for a couple of years at least now a version of this activity in my traditional face-to-face -face micro classes at Calhoun and it really seems to help the students understand all this stuff about genetics and transcription and translation better and the mutations if you actually have to work through it on paper going from a gene on DNA to a protein. All right, so we're going to have a pretend gene that we're working with and we're going to pretend like this is a gene from a bacterial organism Calhounicus stressiensis and this is a gene on DNA. It's coding for a protein exotoxin. So when we get to chapter 11, we'll talk about exotoxins. Exotoxins are proteins that pathogenic bacteria produce that are secreted. They exit. They're toxins that exit the bacterial cell. And they get into our body fluids, and they can get into the bloodstream and travel throughout the body. And these toxins, as the name implies, damage our bodies in some way. And so we'll talk a lot more about those in, in chapter 11. Um, you know, here we're more concerned with the genetics and exploring some possible mutations of this gene and so forth and so on so we can understand that basic information a little bit later. A little bit better, I'm sorry. All right, so we're going to pretend that uh, you have determined the DNA sequence of the genome of Calhounicus stressiensis and you have identified this gene on the DNA that codes for this horrible protein exotoxin. So you're going to do research on it. And you're going to have to go through on a, a terminology review, which that's one of the, the parts of this chapter eight that seems to be the most difficult for a lot of students. So it's going to give you some practice with that. And so did your Learn Smart Labs activity on DNA biology um, and analysis. So, you know, here's another, you know, round of practice that you can do as well. Also for this, I highly suggest that before you work on this, if you haven't done this already, launch this uh, link to this review activity at Learn Genetics. 
because this is kind of similar to what you're going to have to do in this case study. So when you launch that, you will see that they also have a pretend gene on DNA here. It's double-stranded. And notice that for the first phase of expressing a gene, you've got to peel apart the DNA double helix. You've got to pull apart those two DNA strands, and then you're going to make a nucleic acid complementary copy through complementary base pairing of one of those two DNA strands. Okay, so if you go through this exercise, it's going to walk you through doing that. And then once you make that, then you go on to the actual production of the protein part. And so what you're doing here on this online activity is very similar to what you're going to have to uh, apply to this, uh, this little genetics activity I've got you doing on Blackboard. So I just wanted to point that out. Be sure you go through and, and work through that. All right, so the actual activity itself. So here's your, this is a, uh, a gene on DNA. We're pretending this is a gene that's on the DNA of Calhounicus stressiensis. And um, so it's a region along the DNA, double-stranded. And uh, we are going to express this protein, which happens to be an exotoxin that this type of bacteria produces. And I want you to notice here the bottom DNA strand is the template that will be read by the transcription enzyme that we talked about in chapter 8. And I also want you to assume, because for this first step, that's where this is going to happen. And I want you to assume that this whole stretch of DNA is going to be copied. Now, we talked about start and stop locations in chapter 8 for this transcription process, but I want you to just assume it's going to start at one end and finish at the, at the other, everything that you see here. For this part, now downstream, the start and stop rules will apply, as you guys will see. All right, and again, there are questions embedded here, and here you're going to answer those when you're ready on Blackboard. And some of these questions on Blackboard are, are fill in the blanks, so you'll actually have to type in an answer. Uh, some are multiple choice, a couple of them, or a few of them are multiple answer, multiple response type things. So just keep that in mind as you're working through. More terminology review. Uh, here's your codon table, like we talked about in the Chapter 8 lectures. And um, in the Chapter 8 lectures, I did an example of a uh, protein translation problem where we started with the messenger RNA and we translated out the sequence of amino acids. So you'll be doing some, something similar here. And at that point, then, you have reviewed the terminology and you've seen what happens with the normal version of the gene coding for the exotoxin. Uh, now we're going to see what happens with four different genetic mutations of that gene. And as you click through here, you'll see I have the genes highlighted. So there's mutation number one. And a mutation, again, is a change in the nucleotide base sequence of a gene on the DNA. So read through what's happened. You know, there are descriptions of what has happened, and I also have three things highlighted for you. And then for all four of these, it's going to ask you first, what impact, if any, did this mutation have on the protein exotoxin? So remember, this is the DNA. In order to get to the protein, you're going you're gonna to have to go through um, and do the, the, the reading of, of these protein building blocks that we've discussed off of the, the codon table there. So you're going to have to trace these mutations through this whole process that you did at the beginning of the case. Uh, then it's going to ask you what kind of mutation this is, how would it be classified. So that was covered in a Chapter 8 video. It's also in your textbook in that section on mutations. And then the third question for each of these mutations will be asking you whether the phenotype of Calhounica stressiensis would be altered by this particular mutation. So you have to remember what phenotype means. You have to remember what molecules are directly responsible for traits. And so you have to think about whether or not those molecules have changed in each of these instances to know whether a trait might be impacted. So that's just kind of a quick overview of what this activity will be like. Um, if you run into any problems, you know, as you're working through it, you don't understand why 
uh, the answers you're putting in are, are incorrect. Um, post your questions uh, to the discussion board. I'll probably go ahead and create a, a message thread for this activity so it's already there and available because, you know, in class when we do this in class, the students spend a lot of time discussing this with each other and it really helps them learn um, some of these more difficult concepts that come up in Chapter 8. And I do want to point out again to you that this, um, not the mutation part so much, but just the, the basic activity that we're doing here, going from a gene on DNA to protein, the questions like that appear on the T's test, that entrance test for, for nursing school. So it really does behoove you to learn and understand what you're doing here with these types of problems uh, before you get out of Chapter 8, because it's going to help you down the road if you haven't taken the T's test yet. So good luck with this activity, and again, uh, try not to get frustrated if, you, if it seems overwhelming at first, and, and pose questions to the rest of the class on Blackboard so we can uh, help you get through it.